Hello, everyone. Welcome to Testflix 2020. And I hope that you guys are enjoying the amazing content which we have to offer in Testflix 2023. One of that content, which I have been given the opportunity to share to present is API performance testing. So first of all, I hope that you guys are ready for this one. Why do I say that? Because API is exciting. Performance testing is intriguing. And the combination of that puts this API performance testing on another level. Why is that on another level, which we will be seeing in this entire session as well. So let's just get started with it. To understand performance testing of APIs, let's take a step back and let's see what kind of API testing are there. So let's take an example of a mathematics API, which is supposed to create uh, mathematical operations. Let's say it creates addition operation, subtraction, multiplication, and other operation as well. So first, a test engineer would verify whether it's working functionally or not. If I'm providing five plus two, is it providing the correct answer or not? If I'm providing 10 into 70, is it providing the correct answer or not? If I'm providing 25 minus, 25 minus 10, is it providing the correct answer or not? That is the functional aspect of it. Second aspect, which is the automation aspect. So we check the same functionality, with various data. We see whether multiple numbers are being added or not. We are adding 10 numbers. Is it giving correct answer or not? We are adding two negative numbers. Is it giving correct answer or not? We are multiplying three digit with five digit. Is it giving correct answer or not? So that automation would help us in verifying the same functionality with various data on various platforms, same calculator API or mathematics API, working on Chrome browser, working on Firefox, working on Safari, working on Android, working on iOS. So we check all of that as well. So, and the main benefit of automation that it provides faster execution. Now we have checked the API functional thing from automation thing as well. Now we will check the performance thing. Why we need to check the performance thing? Let's consider from user perspective that you are the user, you are being using this API for calculation. Functional, it is working fine. It is giving you the output of 10 plus two and it is working fine for other, other values as well. But it is not working fine from performance perspective. When you execute 10 plus two, it gives you the output of 12 after 13 seconds. So that is not a good user experience. That is not a good behavior of the API from performance perspective. Because everything that we do in IT world, everything that we deliver in IT world is user centric. User experience is the core of everything, is the driving factor for everything. So performance of an API needs to be measured. Now, how we will measure the performance of API? That is the next slide. And before that, the going toward the main part of how we will do performance testing, in this section, we will uh, focus on one of the performance testing, which is load testing. So load testing, as its name suggests that we would uh, provide multiple users, multiple uh, data for that particular API, and then we will see how it is working from performance perspective. What is the performance perspective? How we will measure it? Let's see in the next slides. To see that, to do the measurement of it, we need a technology which enables us in doing API load testing. That technology is a node package artillery. So it is an open source technology which we can leverage for our purpose of API load testing. That is the theory behind it. Now let's see how it works. Now actually let's see how the code of artillery looks like, how the report of artillery looks like, how the execution of artillery looks like. So enough of the slides, let's move towards the execution piece. So it is a YAML file. The artillery would be a YAML file, which would have your scripts of execution or performance of it. Now, what all things would be there? In this demo, I have included two things. One is the configuration of uh, the API performance testing and the other portion is the scenarios of API performance testing. First, let's discuss the configuration. What all things will be there in configuration? First would be not in a particular sequence, but 
the main thing would be to have the target identified. Are we executing on production? Are we executing on pre-prod? Is it an integration environment which we are executing? We will, we will identify all of that. The second one is a plugin which is used or which is leveraged for the reporting section, which we will see in a couple of minutes as well. The third one in the sequence will be reject unauthorized. So as its name suggests, it's used for to handle the authorization kind of thing. The third one, after the third one, phases, that is an interesting power portion, you can say. Why I say interesting? Because let's consider an example of sale, because we are nearing to that uh, season of festival sale, Christmas sale, Diwali sale, New Year sale as well. Let's take an example of New Year sale. What would happen in New Year sale that uh, e-commerce website will give you a prompt message. It, it would give you an email that, hey guys, I'm uh, hosting this sale and XYZ date. And uh, for you as your previous customer, your sale will start at 11 or your sale will start at midnight, so on and so forth. Let's consider the midnight example. That a midnight application is expecting its peak load that at midnight, all of the user would be on the application. Would all of them log in at midnight? No, right? It, it Some of them would start at 11.50. Few excited ones would have a reminder at 11.45. They'll log in at 11.45, have the products being selected, have the wish list being created, have the payments being configured with all the all the, the payments options that are there as well. So the users will log into your application, not at the midnight, but they'll gradually Login into your application. So that gradual phase is called the ramp up phase. Why it is ramp up? Let's say 11.45. Let's take the example of 11.45 to midnight. That is a 15 minutes of gap. Within that 15 minutes, at 11.44, there were zero users. 11.45 onwards, user started to log in into your application. And when the clock hits midnight, you are having the maximum load of the application. Let's take an example of 50,000. So from 11.45 till midnight, it took 15 minutes to reach towards 50,000 users, from zero to 50,000 users. That is ramp up phase. For the demo purpose, I have used the ramp up phase as 10 seconds and the maximum load that uh, we want to achieve for this uh, performance one is 10 users. Now, after ramp up, your actual load testing, your actual performance testing would start. How long that uh, time stretch would be, that is the actual phase. So it could be 30 minutes, it could be 15 minutes, it could be an hour as well. So that would be with 650,000 users, you will be hitting the application for 30 minutes. That is the load testing. And there is another phase, which is we can we can identify that as a counterpart of ramp up phase, which would be ramp down phase. Same example. At midnight, you have reached uh, you may have reached fifty thousand users, and at twelve forty five, we want out of the fifty thousand, ten thousand to be reduced and continue for the further hour with forty thousand. So that reduction of fifty thousand to forty thousand would be called a ramp down phase. So eleven forty five zero users. At midnight, 50 users, 12.45, it will start reducing. And at 12.55, it would reach to 40,000. From 12.55 to 1.55, it will continue with 40,000. So that reduction is called ramp down as well. So that was different phases of performance testing. In this demo, we are covering ramp up and the actual phase. Environments, again, uh, a section which denotes whether it is a test environment, production environment, uh, pre-prod environment, and in, in, in uh, other types of environment as well. Headers as uh, API has a prerequisite to it that what are headers would be there, what is the connection type, what is the content type, what is accepted encoding, and the other uh, related headers as well. Now, a scenarios. Scenarios is bunch of APIs. Now that bunch of APIs could be independent API or it could be a dependent API. Now what is a dependent API? Let's go to the same example of login of sale. That of sale, you have logged in. Once you log in, you can search the product. Once you have searched the product, you can select the size of the product, select the color of the product, and then you can select the product in your checkout. 
So you have to add to the cart as well. So that is the flow of API which is dependent. You cannot search the product once you're not if you're not logged in. So you need to log in first, then you need to search the product, then you need to provide the correct size, correct uh, color, and then you have to go to the checkout. That is a dependent flow of API. On the other other side, there is an independent flow of APIs as well that it would be working for a specific purpose as well. Uh, that clicking on the wish list. Now, clicking on the wish list doesn't require uh, a search product. So you just need to log in and then have the clicking on the wish list. And there are some other which have a guest user. So you don't even have to log in in that case and you can search the product. So depending on the application, a dependent and independent APIs would be identified. So in this flow, in this scenarios for explanation, what we have done, we have uh, picked two APIs. One is a post API and one is a get API. And you can, as you can see, the URLs can be mentioned. The name of the API could be mentioned as well, which would help eventually in the reporting uh, and in, in the performance metrics as well. What is performance metrics? That we'll see in reporting as well. And the other one is the get API, which we have uh, targeted for this one. So now this is the script. Now, how to execute that script? It would be a CLI command, which we have for artillery. So let's execute that. So we'll say artillery done, and then we will say the file name as we want a report. So first step to create a report is to have a JSON file. And then the second step is to convert that JSON file into an uh, HTML file. That's the artillery sequence of report execution. So we'll name it as dry run dot JSON, sorry for the spelling mistake. It should start in a couple of seconds. So once it starts, it would uh, have the log of the execution that, hey, XYZ phase started, hey, XYZ phase completed, hey, ABC phase got started with this configuration, with this much of duration, with this much of expected output, with this timestamp as well. So certain things will be logged. So as we have seen, it has a specific ID uh, stitched to it. It has started this phase as ramp up having duration 10 seconds. Let's verify that with our scripts. Is it matching? Yes, it is. And now it should start a actual phase of 30 seconds as well, which it should end this one. So it denotes that log. So this log helps us in seeing the data in the execution itself. Again, it is, it is a log. And again, in the actual phase as well, there would be 10 seconds of uh, duration where everything will be dumped in the log as well. So you'll see everything being dumped here as well. So now it has completed our execution. So if we scroll a bit up, here it says phase completed, actual phase, index one, duration 30, and this is the matrix of it as well. Now this is all in console. This is all in CLI. How we can see it in report. So for that is the last line says our log file is created. We need to use the artillery command, which would convert our log file or create an HTML file out of our log file as well. So the command is artillery report, a simple one, artillery report, the file name. So after that, it should prompt with a message that your HTML file is uh, created with XYZ name. In this case, the file name dot HTML. Let's see that file. So if we see that file, it would have the data all of the data which were in JSON and in graphical format as well. So first of all, it would say what was the duration, time it started, time it completed, were there any errors or not. And then if we scroll a bit down to a, a section which denotes the performance of uh, the APIs, all of this denotes performance of the APIs, but there's a specific section which deals with the response time, which has a couple of uh, terms which are very interesting terms as well. So this is the one create user so as, as we gave the name create user that's the html report of it so you can see there is two terms p95 and p99 what is that so p99 conveys that 99 percentage of users of apis took either this much of time or lesser than that if it says 361 milliseconds so 99 percentage of our apis took either 361 milliseconds or lesser than that. 95, again, similar to that, 95% of user took either 314 milliseconds or lesser than that. Minimum time observed was 281 millisecond and the maximum was 417 and median, as we uh, have that from mathematical perspective, median value of the entire execution which we have. 
That's for create user. Similar, we have for get user as well. So as we see that create user, which is the post API is taking considerably a uh, good amount of time to execute compared to get user, which is a get API. So 99% of user took either 47 milliseconds or lesser than that to respond. 95% user took either 37 milliseconds or lesser than that to respond. Now this is individual APIs report. We have the similar report for the entire scenario as well. Because our scenario is combination of both of the post API and of the get API. So if we combine both of them, a scenario took 95% of scenarios took either 432 milliseconds or lesser than that to respond. And 99% of scenarios took either 478 milliseconds or lesser than that to report or to uh, create the output of it. So that is in nutshell is an overview of artillery scripts execution, artillery scripts overview and the HTML report of it as well. Hope you guys have liked it. Hope you guys have enjoyed it and hope you guys have uh, got good amount of takeaways out of this one, which you can uh, have for your self learning, uh, then have it with in your in your day to day delivery deliverables and in your as a new thing or as an enhancement as well. And hope you guys have enjoyed it as well, uh, because I have enjoyed it in putting in front of you. So thank you everyone for being part of this one, for being volunteering for uh, Test Quiz 2023 and for being uh, part of this session as well. Thank you.